Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the moon again with our uh, engineer, Laura, last name I've forgotten, Douglas. And we're continuing our cleanup operation and our parts consolidation here at uh, Rosalina Memorial Station. She's going to start off by grabbing this crate and uh, starting to bring it over to the uh, habitat module, which is currently sitting nicely exactly the way it's supposed to be. Um, I have sped pretty much this entire episode up in post because there's just a whole lot of wandering around that uh, isn't very interesting, and it's, you know, about four hours worth of footage that need to be condensed down to something that's a little bit more tolerable. Not going to make you sit around for that entire length of time, but uh, she's going to offload some of her current inventory into said crate, and while we're over here, we might as well... Uh, pick up these uh, decouplers. These were from the uh, drop-off of the disposal unit, which uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more service from today. Uh, can't fit this little thing in her backpack, so we're going to uh, have to move it manually. Uh, at least we should be thankful that she can actually pick it up, which is not the case for most things that I would have liked to have done. Uh, during this expedition, but uh, today's focus is basically going to be this resupply pod in the uh, top right hand corner of the screen. Uh, I do have some plans for it, uh, none of which will actually come to fruition, but you know, attempts were made. The basic plan is to separate this very top uh, padded gray tank and uh, mount it somewhere here on the surface on top of one of these pylons and uh, use it as a fuel depot so that resupplies don't have to hang around until they are empty. They can just uh, dump all of their wares into this big tank and then uh, depart for their own self-disposal. So first we'll collect the uh, antennas after folding the solar panels and then try to separate the tank from the core goes exactly as well as expected. Oh, good. All right. Come on. Wake up, Laura. There. Come on. RCS, please don't. No. Oh, okay, good. She, she's okay. Um, I think we shattered all the solar panels. The stand-up epilepsy. Oh, uh, I really should have unplugged it. Is that... Okay, it's tipping. Of course, the broken side faces downhill. Um, maybe we can, yeah, see the core part should be at a Gina core. It's not letting me grab this thing too far. Okay. Can we... Maybe fold in the landing gear. Yeah, there we go. Okay, signal delay. Duh. Alright, and back in the post. We will uh, get our disposal unit out. We can use the uh, magnet crane on this thing. One, to stop it from rolling away. And hopefully by reparenting parts, based, because it will be docked to something, um, it for some reason thinks that bottom tank is the root part and not the uh, Agena core that is uh, at the top. There's another one at the bottom, but uh, we should be able to separate whatever we want from the core part without too much issue. Uh, maybe because of my excessive use of part clipping, things did not go exactly as planned. Okay, we have a good lock on the magnet now. So we can set our brakes eventually signal delay and then try to drag this thing back or maybe get it right side well, let's get laura back out here to see if we can't separate the uh two halves of the main tank i think uh first we'll try to set this upright because uh this is what i intend on mounting all the junk to all right we need it upright it won't let me change the root part so predictable Okay, well, if you're not going to let me change the root part with the whole, what's the point of being able to, or not the root, the mount node. That's what I was looking for. Anyway, we're going to greatly up the speed of uh, some of this post-edity stuff, as uh, we basically took the core off the bottom, 
and we're going to uh, mount these four radial tanks. We're going to try to strip this thing down as much as we can to uh, try to separate these two main halves of the uh, the main tanks. The bottom one here is fuel only. The top one is life support and fuel, which is why I would much rather have the top part of this tank ready to go or to be our supply depot than the bottom half. Um, but apparently we're just having a lot of issues getting things to detach from other things. As you just saw, it will just not let me detach anything. Oh, that was a neat jump. We'll grab that docking uh, connector port. We're probably going to need that later. And let's just go ahead and get this tank attached. You know, good enough. Nope. You have to actually attach it. There we go. I get the buttons confused sometimes. And a jump! Uh, one, thank goodness it didn't crush poor Laura. And two, nothing exploded. I think it'll stay put. That's fine. Alright, let's see if we can't... Uh, yeah, no, this thing is just too heavy for our disposal unit to be able to do anything of a whole lot of good with it. It would have been nice to be able to rotate it. And for some reason, our HAB module is now on its side, kind of. But we'll just uh, move these parts a little closer, make doing some of this work uh, a little easier, and we now have a nice collection of subterranean parts. That's extra awesome. All right, now let's get this last engine attached down here. There we go. And in uh, not one of my brighter moments, really. Yeah, see, it thinks this bottom tank is the root part, and it won't let me detach that from the top part, which is extra infuriating. So I guess we'll just uh, continue to strip off what we can, make sure that we can dispose of things properly. And now it won't even let me detach these solar panels. Random landing leg, rovers, all the things. All right, so we're going to detach the magnet and uh, see if maybe now... Nope, it's just going to roll wildly down the hill. Yeah, I can hit detach all I want. They don't actually detach from anything, and it's getting super, super frustrating because all I want is this top tank. And if it would let me pull the core off or do anything with it, really, that would be nice. But uh, I guess we'll see if we can attach this drive stage to it. Maybe it'll... Nope, it'll explode. It'll explode and it'll go flying through the air... That was, honestly, that was super predictable. And there goes the tank we wanted. Great. Uh, great. All right. Laura back in action. Uh, we now have a bigger mess to clean up, and that was also right about the point when the game crashed. So the weird editing there was just that. But uh, she will use her helmet to right side up the habitation module and then connect it through a port directly to um, the research station. Hopefully that'll keep it on point. We will roll our standard rover back. We're going to need that in a bit and dis uh, dispatch the uh, disposal module to retrieve the rest of this pile of junk. We can jump Laura back out now. And it's time for her to go back to work. So, now that most of the other problem parts have been destroyed... Yeah, see, we still... we can't detach that, or we can't grab it, really. But we should be able to detach it. But it won't let us do that either. And we lost our electromagnet. I mean, it fell off. We didn't lose it. It's still there. But it's not attached anymore. So, we can detach it here, and that's awesome, and now we can lift it. Now it's not too heavy. I don't understand what's happening there, but all right, let's get that strut off of it, and I guess this is going to have to be our reservoir tank. It is uh, not the one I wanted, but uh, maybe it'll be a lot easier to replace with a better design on a landing resupply pod with something that maybe is a lot easier to detach once it's empty. We can do that, and I don't know why it thinks the port is the root part there. Kerbal Attachment System does some really weird things with part parenting. It is extra goofy sometimes. Alright, 
we will attach our fuel depot now to the research center. There we go, linked up. So now we have a place to put extra fuel. I wish we had a place to put extra life support, but I guess uh, the stores under the habitation module will have to do for now. So before anything else tragic happens, let's collect that magnet and then switch over to our disposal unit. Eventually we'll find it. We're probably going to have to uh, replace that magnet, so let's get the arm down someplace where she can reach it and have an angle that works for us. Dear Laura, thank you. And then she can just go ahead and reattach the magnet and the disposal unit is back to working order. Now, to make it do what we need it to do, we need to make some um, small changes. Very small. So Laura's going to head out here to the uh, science rover, collect a chair, collect a crate, collect a place to mount stuff. We're going to uh, weld the chair on here because direct control would be a whole lot easier. Get the uh, crate in the trunk and then start to head out and collect our various debris that we have left scattered all over the place. Uh, just nice to keep your moon base clean. Uh, some of these things have gone subterranean and are unfortunately thus out of our reach. Uh, never to be recovered, unfortunately. But we'll get everything that we can, head back on over to our pile of junk. And I guess the first real step here is going to be to get it in a somewhat launchable configuration. And so for that, we will just... Uh, Try to deploy the arm here in a somewhat reasonable manner. It actually looks like it works really smoothly here in sped up footage, but doing it uh, doing it live, it actually seems like everything works really slow. So maybe time to speed up the uh, actuation numbers. And unfortunately, the full extension of the arm isn't quite enough to get it where we want it. So we'll just uh, roll this thing into the exact opposite of a launchable configuration, which is, of course, uh, upside down. Although, if you're paying attention to which way that core is facing, it is actually right side up. I'm just really dumb. So we'll uh, retract the uh, boom arm and just get ourselves lined up with uh, one of these tanks. As long as we have a mount point that's low enough, we should be able to spin it. We just have to get the magnet on a relatable axis and uh, hope that it actually magnetizes or makes that clink noise. Now that we have it, we can pull the boom arm in, rotate those rototrons, and get this thing magically upright. I love how the gimbals wiggle. Like, it's, it's really, it's protesting this. I don't want to put me down. <laughs> uh, once we do set it down, the gimbals settle in a little bit, although I've never really seen an asterisk articulate quite so well. But uh, we do need this to stand on its own. We don't want to launch it with our disposal truck right next door. Uh, thankfully, two of the four landing legs are still intact. It's just a, a matter of where to put them. And I guess uh, since we can rest it up on the engine bells, we might as well use two engine bells as two landing legs. And then uh, get this engine mounted here towards the center. Perfect. Grab this landing leg put it over on this side. Yeah, we can't extend it. I guess we're too short. Anyway, that the Gita core should have plenty of power, so I don't think that will actually be a uh, an option or a problem, I should say. Definitely be an option. We'll collect that port from it. We'll probably need to put it someplace else later. And then uh, anything that we can load up onto this thing, we will. Looks like it's going to take more than one trip. So thankful we brought that crate with us on our collection efforts, but uh, now she's just too heavy, so we'll have to mount what we can from the ground. Uh, not a huge problem. I guess we'll put these four tiny thruster ports under here somewhere. I mean, it's not like we really need to... We need to have some control. God, it would be horrible if this thing spun around and piled into our research station, but... Uh, I don't know. The more thrusters we put on it, the more likely it is that we'll be able to get it in some meaningful direction. Uh, let's collect this other junked out solar panel and get it mounted on here, preferably on the side opposite from the first one. We'll at least make some vague attempt to keep our mass somewhat centered along that uh, middle engine. 
and spend a lot of time toggling back and forth between different craft as I try to get to the correct one. But we will get that leg extended, and that should be enough to uh, free the mounting, but I think we'll get the last little bits of our stuff uh, put back in the crate. And then we'll just jump up top and install these strut things, because why not? Jump into the seat. Flying maneuver. That was awesome. Detach the magnet, and voila! It stays upright. Perfect. That's pretty awesome. Alright, we'll uh, tuck our truck arm back into its stowed configuration, and then uh, just go get this truck out of the way. And if anybody at any point knows what happened to our science rover, I'd very much like to know. It is not next to the base anymore, and I'm a little concerned. So we've got this other decoupler that we left here from when this uh, disposal unit landed. It's uh, too heavy to put in our backpack, so we'll just attach it to the rover. And then just uh, slap it in neutral, let it roll down the hill until we're pretty much close enough. There we go. Great job parking. All right, and yeah, it looks like we'll have to set that on the ground first. And of course, we've got two more struts that came with it because the whole point of these things was struts. And I think I've given up on symmetry for any reason almost entirely. Although maybe I put those struts on the side to balance out that decoupler that serves no purpose. And we'll collect the, uh, I don't know, the plumbing port adapter attacher and run it out and plumb this thing into the base proper because we're going to need to transfer some fuel to it if we're going to have any hope of this thing working. Now I thought I had more fuel but apparently I dropped every last little bit of it uh, into our ascent stage. So we'll just be taking a small donation and the game would of course crash on me again. So we're going to redo our fuel transfer thing. We're just going to dump it all in there. Why not? It's not a whole lot of fuel to give up on, so I don't think it'll hurt us all that much. Disconnect the port, and then uh, go back and retrieve uh, the disposal unit. Another flying leap into the chair. She's getting really good at that. Again, if anybody knows what happened to the science rover, I'm a little perturbed as to how it has completely disappeared from the installation. I guess I'll have to uh, check the tracking station and see if it's just somewhere, but the fact that it's gone very much worries me. Okay. Uh, SAS is on. Engine RCS is on. Ah, uh, the core's upside down? Really? Feed pressure too low. Really? Yeah. These tanks aren't pressurized? Oh, good grief. N key? Oh. Oh, look at that. Okay, we're having a liftoff from the moon today, despite all of these setbacks. Take that. Non-pressurized fuel tanks. Holy... Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> this whole cleanup effort has just been one big... mess. <laughs> the entire thing. But uh, I think this is the last of our junk. We'll just maintain getting it skyward with the help of a little physics warp and a little post-editing speddy uppy bits. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to put enough speed on this thing to ensure a complete destruction uh, upon impact, which would be our normal modus operandi for these. But uh, just getting it well clear of the installation and uh, burning through all of this fuel just as best we can. There we go. All the fuel is out. All right. Well, surefire way to take care of this is done. Range safety officer, thank you. That's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.